we are going to dive right into awesome Final Cut Pro tips for the next 10 minutes. It's going to be fast, it's going to be useful, so strap in, here we go. Let's assume I want to replace this clip in my edit with something from my browser. I can select the clip, scrub through my clips in the browser, and when I find the portion of the clip I want to use, I'll hit I to select an endpoint, and then I can hit Option R to replace the clip while keeping the duration of the clip the same. Or I can hit Shift R, which will replace the clip, but keep the duration of the clip from the browser window. You'll notice that the clip is replaced with audio, but you can change that in the edit menu under source media, or by using the shortcuts shift one, two, and three for all video only and audio only. So if I select video only and then replace a clip, the new clip does not have audio attached to it, which is handy for B-roll. But that also affects any clips you drag from the browser. If I drag this clip onto the timeline, there's no audio. But if I hit shift one to set it back to all and then drag that same clip onto the timeline again, it now has audio. Speaking of adding clips to the timeline, if you're looking for clips in the browser window to add to your edit, these three shortcuts will help you edit faster. Number one, if you find a shot you like, you can hit Q to add it above the primary storyline as a connected clip. Number two, you can hit W to add it to the primary storyline and it will shift the rest of your edit down the timeline. Number three, you can hit E and that will add the clip to the primary storyline at the end of your timeline. You probably already know the shortcuts option and the left square bracket and option and the right square bracket to trim the start or end of a clip. But did you know you can also shorten multiple clips that are stacked on top of each other to the playhead with the same shortcuts? With all the clips selected, you can hit either option left square bracket or option right square bracket to trim them all simultaneously. That's not all. Did you know you can also extend the duration of multiple clips at the same time instead of just extending them one at a time? Just by selecting all of the clips, hitting Ctrl D and adding a few seconds, maybe 15 seconds and 00, zero frames to make it longer than you need it to be, and then hit Enter. Then use the shortcut option and the right square bracket to trim them all. You can even speed this process up if you have a command surface that allows you to trigger multiple shortcuts one after the other like this. At the push of a button, I can execute these key commands in sequence and extend the duration of the selected clips really quickly. Sometimes I drag a long clip like an export of a previous YouTube video of mine that I want to reference directly from Finder onto the timeline. I don't want to have to zoom out to find the portion I want and then have to zoom back in to place the clip where I want it, but I also don't want to hit option and the left square bracket and move the clip repeatedly until I find the section I'm looking for. Instead, I hit T to activate the trim tool and I can keep my playhead where it is and hit option and the left square bracket to trim the clip but keep it in place until I find the section that I'm looking to include in my edit. Another great shortcut when you're trimming a long clip down is to hit R to activate the range tool, make your selection and then hit option backslash which will trim the front and end of the clip to that selected range. We just used the range tool and if you use any of these shortcuts to activate different tools, you probably find yourself doing something like this, where you hit B for the blade tool, you make a cut and then you hit A to go back to the select tool. But you can also hold down a tool shortcut like B for the blade tool, click to make a cut and when you let go of the shortcut key, it automatically goes back to the previous tool like the select tool. So for example, I could hold down the R key select a range and then let go of the key to go back to the select tool. And with the select tool activated, I can drag the volume down which will automatically create four keyframes to drop the level of the music which then goes back up over here. If you have an effect applied to your clip that has lots of parameters in the inspector window, you can expand it by double clicking on it at the top over here. Double clicking it again will collapse it. While we're in the inspector window, if you're trying to set the color of multiple things to the same color, instead of clicking and using the eyedropper each time, you can just drag and drop the colors from one swatch to another. Still in the inspector window, you can double click to rename effects, which is really handy if you have multiple color adjustments on a clip that you want to keep track of. You can also do this with the audio effects now by double clicking on them and renaming, which is awesome. Speaking of double clicking, let's say you've made some adjustments on a color wheel adjustment and you want to reset one of the controls. Maybe you've made a bunch of changes and you decide that you don't want to reset everything, but rather just the saturation. You can double click on the saturation slider to reset it, and you can do the same for brightness and on the color pack for tint. 
There are more great color grading tips like this if you want to join hundreds of others in my color grading masterclass. This is the best place to learn how to color grade like a pro in Final Cut Pro in 90 minutes. I'll leave a link to it down below if you're interested in checking it out. Here's another useful tip if you're trying to decide which color grade to use on a clip. Let's say you've graded the clip with a few color adjustments and a LUT, but you want to see if there's a better grade or look that you can come up with. Select the clip on the timeline and hit option Y to duplicate the clip as an audition clip. I'll change the LUT here to something else and I'll make a few changes to the color adjustments. You can then click on this audition icon over here to swap between the different versions of the grade or an even faster way to do it is to use the shortcut control option and the left or right arrow keys to cycle through them. The white line here is called the playhead and when you move the cursor you get this red line which is called the skimmer. So here's a quick workflow tip that I use all the time. I park my playhead at a point in my edit and I know I'm looking for a shot that appears later on my timeline. So I scroll forward to find it. I'll select the clip and hit Command C to copy. And instead of scrolling back to the playhead, I just move my cursor off the timeline so that the skimmer disappears. And then I'll hit the left or right arrow key to move one frame back or forward, which essentially makes the timeline jump back to my playhead and I can paste the clip there. Notice how this clip was dropped on top of the primary storyline? That's because the original clip I copied was on top as well. But what if I copied something from the primary storyline and wanted to drop it on top of the primary storyline? Simply hitting Command V will paste the clip directly onto the primary storyline, and I'll undo that because that's not what I want. Instead, I'll hit Option V to paste the clip as a connected clip on top of the primary storyline. Speaking of the Option key, it's a really useful modifier key, and here are some more uses for it. You can hold down the Option key and click and drag clips to copy them. If you use multicam clips, you'll know that by clicking on an angle in the browser, a cut will be made to switch to that angle. But what if you don't want to make a cut? Well, you might right click on it to change the video angle, but a faster way is to leave your playhead over the clip you want to change and then hold down the Option key and click on the angle you want to change it to and it changes without a cut. You can also use the Option key along with numbers to change the angle so you can swap to the first angle by hitting option 1 or to the second angle by hitting option 2. You can batch export multiple timelines if you've edited multiple different videos in the same library by selecting them all and hitting command E to export. That will queue them up for batch export. But you can also batch export clips. Let's say you have a bunch of clips with titles or effects or overlays on them like you see here. You can select the clips on the timeline that you want in the first export and hit option G to create a compound clip. I'll call this export one. And I can do that for all of the clips I want to export separately. Then I can select any one of them, hit shift F to reveal the clip in my browser. And then I can select all of these export clips and use the shortcut command E to batch export them. Instead of adjusting transform, crop and distort properties in the inspector window, you can also click on the drop down menu here to enable on-screen controls to adjust the parameters. But a faster way is to right click on the viewer window and access the properties from there. Let's select the transform properties and you'll notice I can adjust the position, scale and rotation really quickly. When you're finished, hit done over here. But I'll reset the clip for now and right click again to open up the crop properties. I can select the Ken Burns option down here, which will create a zooming effect from this start position to this end position like so. What you might not know is that you can right click on the viewer again to adjust the easing between the start and end points. While we're in the viewer, let me give you another little trick for when you have a draw mask effect on your clip. If you've ever had to keyframe a mask, you'll know that it's really time consuming, but you might not know that you can click and drag on the outside of the mask to lasso multiple control points to move them at the same time. And you can also click on the inside of a mask to move all of the control points together. So if you're going to be keyframing a draw mask and moving these control points together like this, remember you need to also add a keyframe to the position parameter of the draw mask effect and not just the control points. When on the timeline, you might already use these shortcuts for playback. J to reverse, K to pause, and L to playback forward. Unplex, you'll get weird artifacts in the details. If you press J or L multiple times, you can play back at double speed or even faster in both directions. You can also hold down K and then tap J or L to move backwards or forwards one frame at a time. And that's not all. You can also hold down K and then hold either J to play backwards in slow motion. 
or L to play forwards in slow motion. Weird artifacts and the details. Moving over to the effects window, you probably already know that you can hover your cursor over the different effects to see a preview of what it will look like, but what you might not know is that by holding down Option while you scrub over the effect, you can preview the effect at different opacities before applying it to your clip. It doesn't work on all of the effects, but it's pretty useful for effects in the stylize or looks categories. It's been a while since I've done a compilation of Final Cut Pro tips like this, and if you enjoyed it and want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, if you want to save more time while editing using keyframeless animation in Final Cut Pro, then you need to watch this video next.